Hey everyone, welcome to Source Snack Break. Today is Thursday, May 14th. It is also National Biscuit Day. And if you watch Top Chef like I do, you know that biscuits are tricky and can get you kicked off if you do them wrong. So <laughs> before we get started, I wanna tell you a couple things about this webinar tool. So you're all muted automatically, but you do have access to the live chat. I see some friends popping in some comments now. So you can use it to ask questions or comment and we'll be sure to address your questions. So bring it on. We love questions. The more, the better. So today's guest is Rachel with Ember Tile. We are so excited to have you. Hey, Rachel, how are Hello. you? I'm doing good. Can Thanks you talk a little bit about yourself and a little bit about Ember Tile? Yes. Yeah, so I um, have a background in interior design um, and I was uh, working obviously, and, and commercial interior design for the past eight years or so. And I've been with Emser almost uh, one year. Nice. And I used a lot of Emser when I was designing. We're um, really known for our budget-friendly, uh, <laughs> reading all the little chats on the side, um, <laughs> budget-friendly tiles. So it's a family-owned company. Um, it started in LA, and it's owned by uh, four Iranian brothers. And it's, um, we got rid of the stone, but we still do carry stone. Um, okay. And yeah, we've got 75 branches across America. Um, and uh, we can, we're like Dow, we're like a manufacturer of tile. So all of our tile is branded as Emser, but um, we can also source a ton of stuff. And that's why I like to always tell designers to just reach out to me because you won't always find everything on our website. Although we do have a really vast running line, um, we can also get a ton of really cool stuff, so. Awesome. Yeah. I love that. Okay. So you're going to tell us about two collections today. Can you tell us a little bit about this one called Mood? Yes. Mood is my personal favorite. It's a, a kind of a new one that we have out. And I mean, these pictures don't really do it justice because it actually has like almost, I, I want to say glitter, but that doesn't really Ooh, does have a little bit of shine. Yeah. It's got sparkle okay. in it and it's supposed to uh, be reminiscent of the quartzite in Val, Switzerland that, um, you know, the baths that, uh, what's his name? Zumthor. Yeah. Zumthor. yeah. yeah. <laughs> he used those in his baths. And so it's supposed to be reminiscent of that. And it's got three, um, solid colors and, um, two, um, that are kind of like almost a terrazzo look, but, you know, more of a, a river rock look. Um, so uh, you got the darker gray and then the cream color, and then they have corresponding um, solids. And then there's also a lighter gray solid. And then it also comes in 12 by 23, 23 by 47. It's got um, mosaic and bull wow. Yeah. And wow. it can be used so, in the shower. And no, Oh, so shower. Okay. Yeah. Great. And so it looks like there's a terrazzo look. I don't know about everyone else. Designers, are you guys seeing terrazzo everywhere? I feel like our designers are obsessed with terrazzo. Rachel, are you seeing a whole lot of terrazzo? Yeah, for me, I feel like it's one of those things people either really love it or they don't like it. There's not really an in-between. I love it. I think it's beautiful. And we have an actual terrazzo look. I'm sure you've, you've probably seen that one. Um, but this one is kind of like a little riff on that. But um, yeah. yeah, it's pretty popular. So I don't know if it's reached it's like, apex yeah. and now it's gonna, you know. Yeah. But. So there's a lot of sort of tone on tone with this with some sort of like natural veining as we say. Yeah. Yeah. Is it possible for designers to mix and match the patterns? So you basically with all of our tiles, like there's a certain number of faces that come, but the boxes are randomly packed. So, I mean, of course you can, you know, you can get multiple colors and mix and match that way, but, um, but you don't really get a say over which face you're getting in the Not pattern. It. Okay, um, so it gets that sort of natural look. Yeah. Yeah, and so this is a porcelain, correct? Is it? Correct. Can you tell me what a through body means? <laughs> so there's a little bit of a miss, a lot of tiles these days are through body color. So basically the pattern is printed on the top and then uh -huh. the color below is, um, the same color as the pattern and that's more common. Um, it's not usually like the pattern is printed all the way through. And that's why some of these tiles can be a little bit more expensive than like, let's say a red bodied ceramic tile where, you know, it chips and you can see the red clay underneath. Yeah. Now, um, China, which that the whole tariff thing that happened um, a while back, a lot of tile companies are not getting their, most of their tiles manufactured in China, but China was known to have, really the whitest clay, I guess, for Got the bit. But, um, 
but we still do have quite a bit of through body, um, but I wouldn't say all of ours, but you can always ask and I can okay. help. <laughs> Yeah. Um, let's see. I did have a question about Emzer in general. Do you have um, some, like, I know you're made, do you have Made in America tiles? Um, we can get that. Um, okay. Some of the companies we work with do uh, manufacture. I mean, none of our running lines, I don't think any of our running lines are made in America, but um, I know with the, what, I can't remember which environmental certification some companies, some factories would still be under the umbrella of, and you probably know, cause I know you're okay. ma of made in America, even though they're technically not because of the distance. Okay. Got it. I mean? But yes, we can yes. get, we can get locally made tiles. <laughs> I love that. Okay. Let's take a look at your next one. Cause I'm really excited about this. Yes. Expanse. So um, this is a really cool one. It's uh, basically slab porcelain and it's a thin gauge product. And um, we actually offer CEU. So I'm going to look into um, learning a little bit more about that and then I can get in touch with you. But um, yeah. for now, so yeah, so essentially it's a, a thin gauge, large format porcelain. Um, some of our running line tiles uh, come in. I'm trying to like use my mouse, but I don't think you can see. Can no. you see? Okay. No. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> Some of our running line tiles uh, have this option. And then we've got, as you can see, a few stone looks. Um, it's a really awesome product. It can be used uh, in a variety of ways, exterior cladding, um, countertops, as you can see in that middle image, um, mitered edges, stair treads, um, obviously floors and walls. I, I think it's really great like if you're um, putting it over an existing floor, like in a TI situation and you need something that's thin or potentially in an elevator cab where you can't have a certain amount of weight. Um, but yeah, it's a really wow. cool product. Sweet. Yeah. So let's talk about some of these details because you sent these great photos, which yeah, really like show you. how much you can do with it. Um, so it can go outdoors is what I'm hearing. Correct. Yeah. Okay. And can it go on the floor outdoors? Is it there something can, you yes. know as a designer? It's just good to go. Yeah. It's good to go. Nice. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, and it can be used as a countertop. Yep. Sweet. And so can you sort of like build up the edge of it, as they say, to make it look more like marble by mitering the corners or yeah, something? Yeah, totally. Okay. Yeah. And do you, um, do you need a special fabricator for that kind of thing? So, and that was in the presentation that we were given, you know, he kind of showed us the do's and don'ts of the installation. So they, we don't offer classes, but some of our um, partners, uh, setting material partners offer certification courses and we recommend that people take that, the installers would take that because um, it is a big slab and there's, you know, you have to be really careful with how you're lifting it and making yeah. sure it's on an A-frame and all that kind of stuff. So you don't have to be certified to okay. install it, but it is recommended, yeah. Okay, well, that's good for designers to know that they can yeah. sort of ask for that. Um, so when we're talking large format, how large is large? Um, they come in different size panels. There's uh, 63, by 126 and 59 by 118. And then there's some other various sizes, but that's pretty much the, the two typical sizes that they come in. That's enormous. Is yeah. there something designers should know if they're using it as a wall cladding, like in the photo that we see here? Like, are there special attachments or is it mortared or how, well, how do you attach it to a wall? It is, it is mortared. It can be attached with uh, Z clips too. Um, but yeah, there's definitely like special, um, ways to install and so I could help if designers want to use it and they need to like draw out a detail I can help them um with that um I'm not completely an expert um on the installation process of it but uh we have people that I can work with to you know get the best information on that but yeah the like the substrate you know you uh, we recommend doing like a self-leveling primer um so that the the floor needs to be extra flat because of the large size of the panel Awesome. So Emma has a question here. Uh, yeah. It's thin but large. Does the length increase install costs? Like, do you need a couple people to mush it on the things? Yeah, I would say that, yes, installation costs are probably going to be higher because it is um, a unique product and it's not just like a tile you can kind of slap on. Yeah. So. Yeah. So asking as someone who might be interested in redoing her shower, say, uh, is there something you should know if you are doing a shower and it's an older building or you're retrofitting? Is there something you should know? Like, do things need to be extra, extra flat, extra, extra level with this? Yes. Yes. Okay. 
That's like, so very self, that's what the self leveling is for. Yeah. I mean, that that's a floor usage. So on the wall, I would have to, I think, um, yeah, You're I'd correct. have to get more information on how that's, how that would work, especially yeah. in like a remodel type situation, but yeah. yes. Okay. So, and can you talk a little bit about using this as a stair tread? Cause I think that's super cool. Um, cut it on, on site. Do they cut it on site? Yes, they do cut it on site. I believe that is, I mean, I guess it would all depend on um, how how the process was working because I could see you getting things fa fabricated in a shop somewhere and then put, but I think with right. as far as bear treads go, it would probably be best to do it on site. Okay. Um, but yeah, I just saw that in the presentation that I was given. Um, I've never, I've just started trying to sell this. Um, I haven't, I've had a few people specify it like in a fireplace wall cladding, oh, but yeah, never on stairs before. <laughs> Sweet. <laughs> well, there's always a first for something. Yeah. <laughs> Designers on the call today, try and use it as a stair. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we'll see what happens. Um, so I want to talk a little bit about how you have declare label. So, which is super rad. There are not yes. a lot of tile companies that have a declare label. And not only do you have a declare label, but they are red list free, which is, fabulous um right. so just thank you for doing that but also let's let's talk about how awesome that is <laughs> yeah so um currently we're working on getting our wall tiles um declare labels as well but so this would uh, apply to any of our uh floor and wall tiles um ones that can be used on the floor and the wall not because some of our tiles can only be used on the wall um so yeah it's pretty cool because i mean just innately pile the ingredients are uh, VOC great. free and anything that does have a v VOC when it's in the kiln, it burns off anyway. So yeah. um, it's just innately a more natural product than, you know, like a vinyl or something like that. But yeah, um, it's just some baked earth with a glaze on it. I love yeah, that. so it's pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So designers, are you, do you have any questions for us? We can continue chatting about large format tile, but I would like to throw it out to the audience. If you have any questions about how to use large format tile do you use it as a countertop? Like, what questions do you have? Let's answer them. Um, in the meantime, I would love to go back and talk more about this large format because I am personally a little bit obsessed with it because I didn't yeah. get to use it as a designer. <laughs> and so let's see, can you, it looks like this, in this photo, it's been used as a planter box, which looks pretty rad. Um, is In terms of exterior applications, um, is there anything designers should know, like water barriers? I don't know. <laughs> um. I, oh, I see. Oh, Elsa. look at a question. Look at. Thank you, Elsa. Um, is there any special leveling grout screed considerations for the really large format? Um, yeah, like I said, we recommend like a self leveling um, primer, and essentially that's something they pour on the subfloor that self levels. So it makes uh, even if you're dealing with a floor that's you know not a it, little it wonky. <laughs> level, not necessarily flat, but we all we all, I think people know the difference between that grout yeah. screed. Um, no, no grout, nothing out of the ordinary with that. It's um, just typical, but it's, it's, I think it uses a mortar. And these days we typically don't use mortar anymore with tile. Mm -hmm. uh, oh yeah. Okay. Um, another one from Elsa. Thank you. What about transition screed from the wall to floor? If you're using it, it on both, can you explain what a screed is? Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> Let's see. Um, oh, it's like a metal strip. Thank you, Elsa. Oh, like a like a like a we carry sure. blanket, like a transition. Yeah. So um, could you like butt it against each else? I guess itself. Yeah. So oh yeah, like you can use a um, we carry blanky. So I would recommend specifying that product. But uh, <laughs> yeah, you can use um, any typical um, transition. Okay. And what? How thick are the grout lines? Um, it's recommended, sorry, I'm going to flip to this page. Um, cause lippage is a really big concern with this because of, because of the size. Um, so I think what is one, one sixteenth of an inch okay. is, is recommended. Okay. And can you, for those of us who definitely know, um, can you talk a little bit about what the difference between sanded and unsanded grout is? And if you would need to know that in this case? Um, well, it's just like it sounds. Sanded grout has aggregate in it and unsanded okay. doesn't. Um, 
usually I think like sanded grout would be more in a situation where you have like a wet application, like in a shower where you need, um, you know, more, uh, that grit. Yeah. More like a higher DCOF. Yeah. Um, so here, cause here, I think the idea with this is that the grout joints are super minimal. Got it. Um, I mean, that hence the whole point of having the large format. So, um, yeah. I don't think you would need to specify either way, just unless you were using it in like a shower scenario. Okay. But, depending on your shower size, you might not even have grout joints because it is so large, you know, which is kind of the benefit, right? Yeah. <laughs> Give that mega seamless look. I love it. Yeah. yeah. Sweet. Awesome. Well, designers, if you have any questions, pop them in. Um, in Ooh. the meantime, uh, thank you so much, Rachel. This has been thank super you. fun. Yeah, and great. you all know, um, so designers will be sending you a recording of this after we're done here. You can also order samples from Rachel on our site please do we love that <laughs> so you can order samples of this right now and she will get them to you somehow in your home um, yeah so um the expanse samples we do have like smaller versions and then like i said um a lot of our field tiles come in the expanse you know thin thin uh gauge so i can mm -hmm. get you like a field tile that would be a thicker but it you version know, like a, right but it would just be for your reference to for and I have send you a full size one of these yeah <laughs> Right. Yeah. Awesome. And so designers, if you're interested, we will have another snack break starting on Monday. We have another set. So we'd love to see you there. So smash that register now button. In the meantime, Rachel, it's great to see you. Yeah, and I hope we talk again soon. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. All right. See ya. Bye.